Well, the winning streak can't last forever. The Tigers drop the series finale to the Cleveland Guardians. Their winning streak ends at five games. Let's talk about it all today on Locked on Tigers. You are locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, April 20th, 2023. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, every single day. All righty. Well, as we said in the cold open, the Tigers uh, do drop a baseball game. They were not going to win out. I hate to break it to you all, and certainly they didn't with a loss to the guards here uh, at home. Still won the series. We'll still get to the kind of overall outlook at the end of the show, but uh, let's talk about this ball game, a 3-2 to two loss to the Cleveland Guardians. Winnable game, yet again. Like a, a, a game that they were uh, they were never in the driver's seat for. Uh, they were always kind of, it, it was either tied or they were losing the entire game. But uh, a, a game in which they had opportunities to score, they had opportunities to take the lead, they had plenty of opportunities to tie the game. Uh, like a, a very, very winnable ball game that, Uh, slips through the fingers, which I'm expecting, uh, uh, I'm not going to say a decent amount, but I expect to talk about that kind of situation more than once this year. That's not exactly the most shocking thing in the world uh, to me about this current iteration of your Detroit Tigers, but I have been impressed lately with their ability to fight, and I feel like that's something that we did not see a lot last year, and I can at least appreciate and kind of give the tip of the cap to them in that regard, because yeah, last year there there was none of that, especially well, really, I guess ever. I was gonna say especially later in the season, but they started off with like seven wins in the first like five or six weeks or whatever. So I guess pretty much the whole year. So can appreciate that at a minimum. Um, let's talk. Let let's just go in order here. Let's talk Spencer Turnbull. Okay, he went. Uh, he was the starter in this game. Five and a third, three hits, three earned runs, three walks, three strikeouts, one hit batter on eighty-two pitches. A lot of threes in there. Uh, I thought he was pretty sharp until, like, I mean, until he wasn't. I guess I feel like we say that after a lot of Turnbull outings. But um, like the biggest story in this one for me was pitch mix because he threw fifty-five percent four-seam fastballs, and uh, like that's only twelve total changeups and eleven total sliders in the entire outing. Uh, but the fastball was working really well up until that sixth inning, where uh, he he wouldn't make it out of. But uh, and like the home run was was a fastball, I'm pretty sure, and that was just like ninety-three miles an hour, literally right down the middle. J Ram has been quiet all series. You got him to go 0 for 4 with 4Ks on Tuesday. It was bound to happen. The Tiger Killer himself, uh, Jose Ramirez. But um, nice to not, first five innings again. The fastball was really working. That was nice to see at least. Um, and and like five innings of shutout ball. Still some pretty apparent command issues. And, and like before the sixth as well. Don't get it twisted. Like I'm uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat the outing or anything. Um, but it did seem like he seemed to unravel more as he went deeper and deeper into the ball game. And I would say outside of the first start, that's been a pretty consistent thing throughout all of his outings. Like the sixth inning is tough. And this is still only his fourth start back from not pitching for like a, a year and a half, almost two years. So like, I'm, I'm, willing to give him some time to continue building up, especially if the first four or five innings, which consistently over the last three starts since, you know, the first one was awful. uh, Since his first start, the the first few innings, first four or five innings have been really solid. So um, I'm I'm willing to to continue to let him see if he can kind of stretch his arm back out, get to a point where he can consistently be in that – in, in pitching still good baseball in that sixth inning there. Um, but something that I've noticed across the last few starts as well. And yeah, the pitch mix was really 
the the main story for me in this one, to be honest. Like uh, six whiffs on the fastball alone, great number, really solid. Always good when you can get swings and misses on your four seam fastball. That means you're uh, you're you're keeping the hitters honest. You're you're really mixing your pitches well, or you're just going off script of what you usually do. I think this was somewhat of a combo of all three. Uh, because usually he throws the slider a lot more. Uh, but this one, like, he only had seven whiffs total. He had six on the four-seam fastball. That means he had one total swing and miss on ev everything combined that was not a four-seam fastball. So um, the, the the slider has been super inconsistent usage-wise like this season. We've seen outings in which he's thrown the slider literally more than any other pitch, fastball included. And then we've seen outings when he just like hasn't thrown it at all. And it's been pretty, you know, this is even number. This is four outings. It's been pretty split in half in that regard. It's a weird thing. Maybe it's a, it's a feel thing early on. He just knows whether he has it or not. Uh, I, I don't know. But uh, it, like in this one, he he didn't really go to it that often. 11, 11 th sliders thrown in this entire outing over 80 pitches. Um, so something to keep an eye on is just like his continued evolution and development of his pitch mix because uh it, it's been uh uh i don't know a roller coaster I, I guess so far this season um and so yeah all in all i don't think it was an awful outing three runs and five and a third isn't great um but again shut out through five and and left the game with a chance for the tigers to win like that was uh, again a a very winnable baseball game and uh, i guess like looking big picture pitching throughout this entire series you gave up runs in two innings in a three game series to the the Cleveland Guardians. You like you, the, the the total was what five, six, seven runs, however many I can't even remember. Was it three, two, the final of game one yesterday? I don't even remember already. Um, but like obviously the shutout uh, against in one of the doubleheader games as well. like this was th th this was a a successful pitching performance from inning one of this series all the way through game three. You gave up runs in just two innings all series to a really good baseball team with a, a guy in the middle of the lineup specifically that historically absolutely destroys you. He's got like a 990 career OPS against the Tigers. So I'll I'll take it. I, I uh, Still working out and ironing out some command issues, as I said. Still want him to get stretched out more and look better, deeper into ball games. We still got plenty of stuff to address as far as Turnbull goes. Most of it command oriented, but um, I, I'm not going to complain too terribly much about this ball game. The the Tigers had a chance to win if the offense came through a little bit more, um, which has been an issue uh, a lot this season already. And we'll get into that later in the show. But first, I got to tell you all about our friends over at. Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and the calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. That is Built. You have to try it. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, then I have just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs, they are healthy and taste amazing. Seriously, they, they taste so amazing. You won't even think they're good for you. They're a candy bar taste, but they have the macros of a protein bar. They're unbelievable. Um, and they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate, which is one of the many reasons that makes them unbelievable. It's healthy, yet covered in real chocolate. They come in flavors like peanut butter, brownie, cookies and cream, churro, my favorite, all across the board. They're coming out with new flavors all the time. I don't know how they don't do it, but they always make a great tasting bar that tastes amazing. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. You also now don't need to wait to get a box. For years, I've been telling you all to go to Built.com. You still can go to Built.com. But now you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club and get specialty flavors as well right there in the store. A 4-bar box at Walmart, a 13-bar box at Sam's Club, or Still go back to built.com. However you do it, get your hands on some built bars today. All right, everybody. Welcome back here. Segment two of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the people that do tune in every single day. The everydayers tomorrow 
what are we going to do tomorrow? Off day for the Tigers. We'll definitely preview the series uh, ahead against Baltimore in that one. Um, but maybe talk about uh, organizational news and notes, kind of catch up. We haven't had a chance to catch up on stories because there's games every day. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll still have a nice uh, Friday show to send you off into your weekend tomorrow. Uh, let's get back into this ball game. So, basically, let's go bullpen, okay? This bullpen has been really solid pretty much ever since I came on air and was like, this bullpen looks really rough, which is just like how it goes. That's fine. And I still have a ton of questions, large sample size, about who are we going to use in certain situations and about the the ability of some of these dudes to last in this pen throughout the course of the season. But credit where credit is due, they have not given up a run in quite a long time at this point, the bullpen. And uh, we're dating back to like last week. So really, really solid, solid stuff. We talked about it a lot in the Giants series. We talked about it a lot in obviously the the Blue Jay series for opposite reasons and then this series ha- was was a bullpen masterclass. I don't think they gave up a run the entire series. So, uh really really solid stuff. Tyler Alexander one and two thirds, one hit, no runs, one walk, two strikeouts. Really cutter heavy in this one for Tyler Alexander. Um and honestly, he was hit pretty hard. I wasn't that impressed with him, but Really important multiple innings reliever in this pen, especially the day after a doubleheader. Your bullpen is absolutely shot. Uh, You're not going to be able to go to everybody you want to go to. And he didn't allow a run in almost two innings. And so I'm going to gladly take it. Not going to complain too terribly much. Alex Lang. Man, Alex Lang. One inning, no hits, no earned runs, one walk and two strikeouts. He's insane because, like, I, I didn't think he had very good command. I really didn't. I, I didn't think he was that sharp as far as command goes in this one, but his stuff is just so ridiculously, disgustingly gross. It's vomit inducing that like he still gets chases. He still gets a ton of check swings and chases and, 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 and bad swings that make hitters look like fools and gets out of the inning unscathed despite the, the walk and all. And I think he stole the base as well in that inning. Like, it almost has a sub-2 ERA on the season now. Really has only had one really bad outing. So, I I, I still want to see more consistent command. But, like, it just goes to show you how high his ceiling is when he is on. Because his stuff is so good that even when he doesn't have pinpoint, he, he still makes some hitters look ridiculous. So, uh, solid, solid outing. I'm not going to, again, not going to complain about no runs given up. Jose Cisnero there, uh, finished the game off one inning, one hit, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Super fastball heavy in this one, and the velo was around 94-95, which is good to see, considering early in the year it was kind of down. Slider and high leverage, I I was impressed with. That takes some guts. Takes some guts to do the slider on a full count to, like, the outside edge. Like, that, that takes some... Some guts, but it worked. And, uh, you, you know, his last few outings have been a lot better than the first two uh, of the year. That is for certain. Uh, I still want to be the, I still want to see the slider be more effective and, and more consistently effective. Uh, I, I still have some, some long term questions about Cisnero that uh, I don't think I have the answers to yet, but I am much more impressed, like I said, with the last few outings. And, uh, well, his first, what, two, was it his first two or three? Was it his first three outings of the year weren't good? But ERA back down, like, below five for whatever that's worth, too. It was really, really high at one point, so I guess that's kind of something. But also, some of those runners and those home runs given up were inherited, so it maybe it never was, like, super, super high. But still, stuff-wise, been been looking better than the first few series of the year, and and, and we'll take that. So we'll see how he continues to progress throughout the season um let's get to the offense i guess that's everybody that pitched in this game again like really successful pitching series for this team uh what that's well i guess did we go into extras i can't even remember my (laughs) memory is so shot only gave up it only gave up runs in two innings though all series we'll gladly take it i was gonna do like the math like oh you know 27 innings only gave up two runs innings in two of 27 innings but i genuinely can't remember if we went into no we didn't go into extras right because the walk-off was in the bottom of the ninth. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, 
Let's get to the offense, shall we? Um, let's start with some of the good. Spencer Torkelson had a phenomenal game. Uh, if you were to give out like a player of the game award, I think it would pretty certainly go to Spencer Torkelson. Two for three with a double, a home run, and a walk. The weird thing that that early on, you know, we we've talked about Torkelson a lot, obviously, over the last year. Last year was brutal. But he was drawing walks, and it was almost like he was too – I don't want to use the word timid, but it was almost like he was, he was too passive. That's the word I want to use. At the plate, we talked about that a ton in the regular season last year if you were a listener uh, over last season. And so this year, that's only his second walk of the year. And, like, he, he hasn't been striking out at a ridiculously high clip, but it has been noticeable that, that okay, he looks like he's been more aggressive, but – he is walking a lot less, so nice to see him get the walk for sure. Uh, and then the home run, the double, were absolute beauties to the pull side as well, really beating the pitcher to uh, to spots there. 108 miles an hour and 110 miles an hour on the exit velocity of those two hits. Uh, the double, I well, the, the heater was on a, what, 2-0, 3-0 count and just turned on it, so getting the green light there was, was nice to see. I mean, fastball belt high. Uh, not going to see a better pitch than that in the AB. And then the double, you know, was uh, was a curveball that was tried to be a high curveball, like high curveball right at the top of the zone and just dips too low, caught way too much of the plate. And, you know, you hang, we bang. And he, uh, he gripped it and ripped it into uh, in the left center field. So good, good day at the plate. Even his his last AB against Class A, like that, that almost dropped, and, and you want to go opposite way there if you can. Like, he's going to jam you inside consistently. That's what Class A does, just cut her inside, cut her inside, cut her inside, and uh, especially to righties. And so you want to try to drive that the opposite way with less than two outs and a man on second. Um, so I, I, I didn't think he did anything really wrong there. Just unfortunately didn't drop and, and kind of in that in-between where he didn't crush it, so he didn't, like, find a gap or go, like, over anybody's head, but – uh, it also wasn't soft enough to to fall in front of the, the right fielder there. So, um, yeah, thought it was a, a pretty good day for Spencer Torkelson. Kerry Carpenter, two for four. Uh, another day, another – Kerry barrels, baby. I don't think he actually had a barrel in this one. But um, he's looking great at the plate. He really is. Like, even when he's not crushing the ball the right field, which feels like he does, like, once a game, he's hitting the ball really hard and putting it in play consistently – no strikeouts in this game. And again, like two for four in the three balls he did, uh, three of the four balls rather that he did put in play, exit velocities of 92, 91, and 100 miles an hour. Just crushing the baseball. Um, hope uh, Cal Quantrill's okay, by the way. I'm recording this right after the game. Uh, so I don't have an update on him. Obviously, Kerry Carpenter had a, had a very, what was that, 92 mile an hour comeback or there hit. Quantrill in what the ankle foot lower leg area and then he didn't pitch after that either so hope he's okay that's a that's a really fun guy to watch pitch uh, and obviously don't want to see anyone get hurt ever so um, but Kerry Carpenter really really successful day at the plate yet again and uh, if it's not apparent at this point I uh, like it well it is apparent at this point <laughs> I was gonna make an analogy there but it, it, there is no analogy to make it is very apparent that he is not only going to be in the lineup, but he is going to bat in the heart of the lineup against every single righty we face for the foreseeable future, uh, which is a, a good thing. We'll gladly take it. We love somebody who uh, his OPS is in the what mid or high 800s at this point. Really, really nice start to the season. Uh, Riley Green getting to some of the maybe not so great. Let's get into Riley Green after the break. Okay, let's do that. First, though, I got to tell you all about our friends over at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know a part will fit. Or your money back because just like in sports confidence is the name of the game when you shop at ebay motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from you'll be back in time for the game in no time <laughs> in time in no time after all it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed get the right parts the right fit and the right prices on ebaymotors.com let's ride eligible items only exclusions apply 
All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment of Locked On Tigers. Tigers drop this ball game three to two. Um, yeah, so let, let's get to, to some more of the offensive storylines. Maybe talk about the areas in which the Tigers struggled, because in my opinion, the offense is, is why this game was lost. I'm not going to complain about three runs given up over nine innings uh, to, uh, again, a team that's going to win around 90 games this year. Like, I'm, I'm not going to complain too much about that. And, and the offense just continues to really struggle with runners in scoring position. Starting with some individual performance, Riley Green, 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, and the one non-strikeout was, not surprisingly, a ground ball to the right side of the field. Um, took some really hittable pitches in this one as well. And A.J. Hinch was asked about it after the game, and he said, that he's going through some growing pains is what he called it and uh, still has confidence in what he's trying to do and his approach and all that, which I, I agree with. His approach is not the problem. It's uh, when, when he gets hittable pitches, it's about, you know, we, we've talked about that at length already. We're, you know, we're not even 20 games in. We've already used that analogy about 50 times, you know, marrying a, approach and uh, an execution. But it's a frustrating time for sure, and I'm sure it is for him too. Uh, clearly some adjustments still need to be made. And, you know, people talk about his swing all the time. And, uh, I mean, objectively, so far uh, across his entire Major League career, spring, this season, last season, et cetera, um, just ground balls like crazy. And we've talked about that a lot dating back to last season and haven't stopped talking about it because it hasn't gone away. So need to see some adjustments and some improvements in that area. And then obviously 0 for 4, 3 Ks is never a great day for somebody that's hitting third in your lineup. So um, we'll see what happens, but is the sole reason we won a game this series as well. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. He's still got a lot going for him and still is really good in a lot of areas. Uh, DH in this one as well. Matt Beerling getting the nod in center field. Zach McKinstry. Pinch hit bomb. Uh, the OPS is like around 700 now. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's up around 700. Uh, 250 batting average brings you some versatility. Still not sure he's long for the like 162 game season to be up here all year, but we'll gladly take it. And and he's clearly a platoon option that that again provides some versatility. Um, and, and he's made some big plays in close games so far. Like he he really hasn't been. Uh, I know when we brought him in, it was kind of a head scratcher and and whatnot. And again, like I'm, I'm still not confident he's going to make it even through the season. But um, not not a bad start to the year for Zach McKinstry, batting down there, uh, usually in the eight and eight or nine spot. Is has had some really big moments defensively and at the plate in the last uh, last what four or five games. So we'll take it. Um, what else? Tyler Nevin, zero for four, big at bat late, fouled off a lot of pitches there. Uh, nice to see, but also got a lot of like 98 right down the middle. Now, again, like Nevin is uh, is kind of so far in his career been more of a 4A player, and Classe's cutter is, you know, one of the best pitchers in the entire game of baseball. So, uh, and, he, and he's one of the best pitchers in the entire game of baseball. So, we're not going to be, you know, like that's that's ridiculous or whatever. Still an 11 pitch, 10, 11, 12 pitch at bat there late in the game with runners on. Um, and, and almost dropped all, it would have been a bad bippy hit for sure, but almost dropped. So, um, nice to see that at bat late, but still, uh, for a guy that destroyed triple a pitching before getting called up need to, uh, need to see some of that so far. I think he still only has one hit as a tiger. Uh, I think one hit, one walk, one hit, two walks, something like that. So need a little bit more production out of him. Eric Haas, uh, 0 for four, just like no power so far this season like the batting average isn't awful i think it's around 250 um and and he's not going to hit for a high average that's going to be about where he sits in the mid 200s he's never been a high walk rate guy and he never will be a high walk rate guy so you're never going to get like this obp hitter either like pretty much i don't want to say all because again like he, he he will hit in the 200s he's not you know like like old Jim who had him done, I guess is who I was thinking. Oh, I was going to say Jim Tomei kind of similar thing later in his career, but certainly not in his prime, but you know, he's not, he's not like elder statesman, Adam Dunn, where he's going to, you know, like only have a high slugging percentage and, and have a no batting average. Like he's going to hit for a decent clip, but he, he needs pop to be valuable at the plate. Like his, he, he needs to slug in, in at least like, you know, 430, 440, 450 range. 
Um, and that's where a lot of his value has come at the plate so far in his major league career is having a, a really nice slugging percentage and destroying fastballs. And so far this year, we just haven't seen that whatsoever. Um, and, you know, we, we've already talked about it all kind of a few times already this season, but he's a slow starter and he has been kind of his entire last year he off to a really slow start, an abysmally slow start, and then turned around and was still the best hitter on the team after game 162. So um, hopefully he can turn it around, but definitely kind of a, a frustrating start to the season in that regard. I think his slug is literally in like the mid 200s, like just no extra base power whatsoever. But then on Cuba do before we get into kind of the team outlook and then wrap up the show, uh, one for four, the big hit late was nice, but you know, it was nice to see it drop, but not a fantastic at bat. Um, honestly, since his first series, like the, when he first got called up first series, I thought he looked pretty solid. And since then he really hasn't, uh, th this series, especially just kind of looked lost at the plate, to be honest with you, really uncompetitive, like not good at bats. And, Look like I, he's batted fifth both of the last two games. I I either need him not batting fifth or I need him to turn it around. Preferably, I think both. I don't <laughs> like honestly. I, I would I would prefer he turns it around and still doesn't bat fifth. To be completely honest with you, but um, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. We'll see how the next series or two treats him. Um, but uh, especially with the emergence of Kerry Carpenter and whatnot. Uh, I, I know that with Meadows gone, you know, we were kind of still an outfielder short and Veerling hasn't really been tearing the cover off the ball either lately. Um, so it, it's still going to be kind of a platoon thing between him and Veerling, I would imagine. But uh, need needs some some uh, he, he walks like he does walk. He does work some counts sometimes, but just the last three or four games has not done any of that. So even if he's not, you know, crushing the baseball or hitting, you know, 330 or anything like that, if he can just get back to like not rolling over or popping out two pitches into every at bat. I, I, I take that version of Akil Badu at this point. Let's talk offense as a whole, and then we'll get you out of here. One for nine with runners in scoring position, eight hits, four of them extra base hits, nine total base runners with the Torgelson walk in there. Um, yeah, like I, I, I'm glad we got a little bit of pop today. Four extra base hits on, on eight total hits is not bad, right? That's, that's not horrible, but most of it was from Torque. Like he had two of them by himself. So you removed Spencer Torkelson from the game. I know it's a dangerous game to play, but still like you take one hitter out and, and half of your extra base hits goes away. That's probably not the best sign in the world. Um, it, it's just, again, really the biggest thing. And this one was just zero clutch hitting. Like we, we've talked about it time and time again in this episode and this season already. Um, but like yet again, one for nine with runners in scoring position. Maton Green and Baez also at the top. Your one, two, and three hitter go one for 12 with four Ks on the game as a whole. Not going to win too many games with the three players that get the most at bats on your team are, are one for 12 total. So need, uh, need that. And those are the guys that you expect to come through with clutch hitting and whatnot as well, the top of your lineup. So Tigers can't really figure out leadoff. If you look at uh, just like, OPS or, or batting average, whatever stat you want to use, to be honest with you, just production from leadoff hitter so far this season. Like they've gotten decent production out of the two hitter, okay out of the three, like could be better everywhere. Like this isn't a, a fantastic offense, obviously, but really, really, really awful numbers from the leadoff spot so far this season. So you got to figure out somebody who can, who can get comfortable in that, uh, in that spot. Cause that's literally the hitter that's going to get the most at bats every single game. Um, middle of the third did really well, did everything pretty much offensively uh, McKinstry home run late, you know, shout out the dog, but, um, like Carpenter and Torkelson were both in the middle third and, and kind of carried the team offensively in this one as a whole. Like it, it, it's nice to know this team is capable of coming back into games, right? Like when faced with deficits that it, it, it's, we've seen a lot of close games this series, We've seen a lot of close games this season already. The Giants series even had some bigger holes than this one, and they were able to dig out of all of them. And that I can I greatly appreciate that, honestly. Um, and if they hit better with runners in scoring position, then they wouldn't be behind in the first place a lot of these times, or they would be able to to kind of climb out of holes with with even more ease than they have shown in the last five or six games. But um, it's it's just nice to know. Like last year, the first three innings of the game, if the opponent scores, it you know it was kind of wraps. So 
it's at least nice to know, you know, <laughs> six outs into a ball game that if if uh, if you're losing, it's not automatically over, and this team has some fight in it. I love that. That that's uh that that's good. That's that's a good tangible thing that we have seen this season that I can uh, that I can appreciate and respect. And yeah, like even in this game specifically, going into the eighth inning, we were down three to one, and I was kind of like, you know, you need to tie it here because. You aren't still scoring off of uh, Class A. Like, you're not. He's unbelievable. And they scored. They got one run back, and then I was kind of like, oh, it's over. But then they got a couple of base runners off of Class A. And even, you know, again, like Torgelson, that ball almost fell. Like, the the uh, Nevin ball almost dropped as well. Uh, Eric Haas is at uh, – Eric, that at-bat kind of pissed me off. Like, first pitch swinging after an 11-pitch A-B, and it's just a can of corn to the outfield. But um, some some good approaches against some really good pitchers lately. And, and that I, I, I like to see, and it appears to be a step in the right direction. Um, so yeah, just need the execution, much better approaches, still need the execution, uh, especially with runners on base. That is for sure. Okay. Thanks for making lockdown tigers. Your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube shout out to the everydayers. As we say, people that uh, do tune in every single day, we'll be back tomorrow. Like I said, Kind of looking over news and no- notes within the organization and uh, and previewing that series against Baltimore. Yeah, you got you got Baltimore, Milwaukee, Baltimore. That's the rest of your month. So buckle up. Those are some good ball teams. Uh, and and again, we said all along, if you can just keep your head barely above water for the first six weeks of the season, because then you got Mets, Cardinals, Guardians again, like the first three or four series of May, right? You can just keep your head above water and not be completely out of it after the first six weeks. Then you start playing some very beatable teams and then the summer gets fun. Okay. So let's, let's try and do that. Let's just try to not go on any big losing streaks. Try to, to maybe steal a series or two, not get swept. That's like a huge thing this time of year. Just, just, uh, I know the bar is like on the floor, but genuinely, like if we can just, Get, get some more wins together against some really good teams here over the next three or four weeks and uh, then have the rest of the summer against not like the most difficult schedule in baseball, I, I think we, we could maybe do some things. All right? Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope, and I'll catch you all tomorrow, baby. Go Tigers.